What were you feeling and how were you feeling when you walked away yesterday afternoon? You know, uh, when it's over, you just sort of sit there and go, whoa, what just happened? You know, uh, Oprah called me, my favorite daughter, favorite son called me and said, are you okay? Were you afraid? And it's interesting, when I was sitting there, I really was not afraid. I did not think that R. Kelly was gonna hurt me. I knew that he was very angry. I knew that he didn't like some of the questions. He and I, a couple of times, had a very testy back and forth. But I just didn't think, I never felt that he was going to hurt me. What I was worried about is that in his flailing and because he was so amped up, that he might accidentally hit me. So I was worried about that. And then I think, in a moment like that, I think it's best just to remain calm. I made eye contact with him to sort of say, you know, when you're done, I'm still gonna be sitting right here waiting for you. And so I think when you have, because I was so calm and he was so amped up, maybe it was calming to him. He was given the opportunity to stop. Our producer said, look, we can take a break. His guy came out and said, Robert, Robert, let, let's stop. And he goes, no, 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 I want to talk. Where is the camera? He did not want to end that conversation. What about the moment when he actually got out of his chair? Yeah. Did, did that change at all? Were you feeling uncomfortable? No, I wasn't feeling uncomfortable. I was thinking, where is he going? I, I was thinking, you know, I was really thinking, I hope he's not leaving. I have some more questions. That's what I was thinking. And, and how did you strike that balance? Because when I was watching the raw interview, I was thinking that the entire time, whoa, she's got to walk a fine line here. Mm -hmm. She doesn't want to make him too angry yeah, you where don't he want to agitate off the him. mic yes. and he walks yes. out the door. Well, I was worried that he was going to do that and I was glad that he didn't because as you see, there's much more to the conversation. And he doesn't stay an angry man the whole time. You know, most of the time he's very calm. He's very level-headed. He just wants people to understand that he thinks in some ways that it's a conspiracy against him. All the women are lying. Even his inner circle has been lying. People are trying to get book, de book deals. Everyone's trying to capitalize off of him, but that's really uh, revisionist and selective amnesia based on all that we've heard about R. Kelly. These are not new allegations. I think a lot of people are wondering how you were able to secure this interview and, and why he decided to sit down and, and why right now is the right time considering he was just arrested and his case has barely even started. Well, to be honest with you, I kept saying to the team here, um, I can't believe he's actually gonna sit down. We're gonna go out there, we've made all the arrangements. I said, I will not be surprised if we get there. And he says, nope, I've changed my mind. And at every step of the way, I kept thinking, he's gonna change his mind, gonna change his mind, gonna change his mind. I met him ahead of time, I went to his apartment. And yeah, what was that conversation like? Well, I just wanted to say, hey, I wanted to introduce myself. I'd met him five years ago at a party, but I don't assume that, that he would remember that. You don't wanna be that guy, hey, remember me? We met five years ago. <laughs> I didn't wanna be that guy. But I wanted to have, a, uh, have a, some interaction with him before the interview so that I had seen him before the first time he just sat down in the chair because I knew that these were gonna be very um, uh, sensitive questions that had to be asked and I, didn't, I just wanted to make contact with him. So we went to his apartment and he was sitting there. Uh, there was a big sign that says, welcome home, we have video of it, and balloons and he's sitting there drinking hot coffee. It was very hot because he was doing something for his voice. Yeah. His little two dogs were running around. Popcorn and Belief were running around. And he was very calm and very relaxed. He said, you can ask me anything. There's nothing off limits. He did not want to talk about Aaliyah. They did, he, I say that they say nothing off limits, but he did not want to talk about okay. Aaliyah. And he did not want to talk about the current court case, which I was okay with because there was so much to talk to R. Kelly about. And did he say, and here's why I decided to, to talk to you, Gail King? No, even when I asked him that, the first thing he goes, he did answer that question. He said, I've held this in for so long. I've listened to all these lies about me. I've heard people say things that just aren't true. Mm -hmm. And I wanted people to hear from me about how, how I'm feeling and what I believe. You think this is gonna help or hurt him? I don't know. You know, some people say, you know, after seeing him and seeing his emotion and his passion, maybe there's something to this. On the other hand, there are other people, I would say the majority in the court of public opinion, say this is what people in this position do. They scream and they yell and they try to deflect. But I do know that a couple of people have reached out to me and said they found him very compelling. But also, you know, you could look at it and think his behavior was also very telling. Well, you know, the, um, the mothers, the parents of two of the girls who live with him now, his girlfriends, say after looking at that tape and after seeing that interview, they're now more concerned than ever about their daughters. I did an interview with the daughters after I talked to R. Kelly, which I also think is very revealing. What was that like? Well, you know, it was, it was fascinating to me because 
here are these two young women, and R. Kelly wants people to know, they are not being held hostage, they are not chained up in a room, they are free to come and go as they please, which we saw, but the parents say it's not about a physical hold. They believe that R. Kelly has brainwashed their daughters. What do you, what do you want? And they're very angry. They're, they're, I was fascinated that the daughters are so angry with the parents. Right. They were crying. They were emotional. They were crying, but they were crying tears of anger. They weren't crying tears of, oh my God, this. Yeah. They were crying tears of anger. They are very angry with their parents. So after hearing their that stories. That surprised me. And after hearing R. Kelly, what do you, what do you walk away feeling and thinking and seeing the documentary? Well, they're all, the girls, the two young work girls, and they're 23 and 21, and R. Kelly are all telling the same story. This, this is all about money for the parents. Um, the parents are lying. So I'm not surprised that they're all three telling the same story. Mm -hmm. But it's just one layer on top of another layer of what I call hashtag hot mess. It's just not a good story no matter how you look at it. It's hard to reconcile all that in your head, make it make sense. Well, well it, does, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, and it is very disturbing. That documentary, Surviving R. Kelly, was deeply disturbing. And part of the reason why it's so disturbing is because these are not new allegations. And I think we have to look at it, us as a society. What is it about us that we need to keep seeing this over and over and over again before we pay attention? It's not lost on me that the Michael Jackson documentary right. and the R. Kelly story are breaking at the same time. People are listening with different ears. I think they're more open to believing. And I think we are, we are all now taking a second look at things. Were you even surprised knowing what you know about R. Kelly and his past and all of the allegations that this is how it went? I, I was surprised that he was that angry and that he was that emotional. I knew that he wasn't going to, I knew that he was gonna deny. I did expect him to deny. I didn't think that he would deny things that have been so obviously been disproven. Because I said, Did, have you ever done anything wrong? He goes, yes, I've been wrong in having a big heart. I mean, and, and I said to him, you feel, it seems like you're playing the victim card. Are you a victim in all of this? I mean, so I wasn't, I, that did surprise me. You know, everybody can say, well, I wish I would have done that differently. And we got none of that from him.